Hey, I just want to ask, um, you're talking a lot about the high heavens, the burning hells. Uh, does the necromancer god Tragul factor at all into the story of Diablo 3 or any upcoming tie-ins? And if I could add another question to that, does he have any effect on Ethereal's ability to see the future? Okay, so um, Tragul um, was last seen in the Sin War trilogy, um, and he is the father. For those of you who don't know, he's sort of this, this world protector dragon. You know, he might be a living constellation. He might be a personification of, you know, the past, present, and future of humanity. So he's a mysterious character. He is the, the founder of the Necromancer Order, and he's very uh, concerned with balance. He is not around anymore. Um, after uh, he set his necromancers on the path, Rathma was their founder, and he you know, set them on their path. He's gone. Um, we, we don't say where, and that's sort of one of the mysteries of the universe that's out there right now. And uh, does he really? Oh, no, OK. Hi. Um, when we killed the two lesser evils in Diablo 2, they didn't actually have like a soul stone, so would they still be around? <laughs> hmm, that's very interesting. <laughs> I, I would say I shouldn't win. Uh, <clears throat> Let's try that again. I wouldn't leave them lying around. That'd be dangerous. I urge you to play. By, picking up a, a Lord of Hell. You mm -hmm. gotta play Diablo 3. You're gonna learn so much when you play that game. You should try it out. <laughs> Thank you. You are totally not satisfied with that answer. Hey guys, I had a quick question. And uh, the cinematics for Diablo 3, uh, you see like the smoking remains of a mountain and this demonic horde pouring forth from the bowels of it. Um, is that mountain the shattered remains of Mount Ariad after the uh, world stone was sh broken? Yes. And um, why that particular point are they choosing to invade from? Uh, I, I would say, boy, have we even discussed, there's a logical one that pops into my head. I don't even know if we've discussed it because it's always just been, it just seemed obvious. But if the world stone just went up or whatever happened to it, this is the place between the worlds where, you know, the fabric of reality is weakest. So if you're going to invade, right, it's kind of the spot where, you know, you can push a lot of demons through, right? So, I don't know. No, that, that's actually pretty much as, as far as we've bothered discussing it is, yeah, exactly that. And we haven't gone to a, a detailed and it looks bitchin'. scientific analysis of why exactly there. But, yeah, it's cool. How's that sound? Sounds good enough to me. Thank you. Uh, hey guys, I have a two-part question for Kevin. So, why are you so devilishly handsome? And I just asked him that this morning. Yeah, I've been waiting for the softball questions. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, no problem. And uh, the second part is the witch doctor. Which tribe does he come from? What's the name of it? Now you're now you're killing me. Seven stones? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'd, have, we'd have to look. Uh, you the can... answer to the first question, I can do that one, though. It's, it's skin cream. You've got to look after your skin. It's you can actually, there's a, there's a web story about it. And uh, Abdel Hazir, Hazir um, visited his tribe. So the tribe that he goes to is, uh, is, is actually the witch doctor's tribe. You remember that character's name, but you don't remember the witch doctor's tribe? He, he reads a lot of lore for us in the, in the game, so I care so I remember him. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, you just, uh, I was watching some of the videos there about uh, environments, and I was just wondering, uh, the, the environments look to be really detailed, and I was just wondering whether they're still randomized or not. Uh, yes, they are. Um, so the, it, it's a little different than it was in Diablo 2, in that the exterior zones, the outside ones, the non-dungeons, don't have randomized edges. Um, those are set, and as a result, they can look a lot cooler. What we have is giant sort of squares of content in the middle that switch out. So you could walk through, um, and you know, one time there's a little encampment, and it's full of snake men. And you kill them, and you get a lore, and it's like Belial's orders, and you learn a little more about the story. The next time you go, it's the entrance to uh, a temple, and inside is a treasure hunter, and he's got the idol of Ragnar, and then you've got a 30 minute dungeon underneath, and the time after that, um, it's one of Zoltan Cool's archives. Like, so we, we do it sort of that way. Another time you can walk through and it's just empty desert. 
Um, so that, that's where a lot of the randomness comes. And the way that the main quest objectives are set up, you have to be exploring a zone to find that. And as you do, you will run across all of these other random events. And the dungeons are still completely random like they were in D2. Uh, thank you. Mm. Mm. Hello, so after what you said, uh, I would like to know where is my hero of Diablo 1? <laughs> We're going to get through this, guys. We'll be all right. <laughs> okay, if I remember correctly, and all of you just correct me if I'm wrong here, um, I believe that uh, we are implying that Blood Raven is the rogue from Diablo 1. So the, the heroes of Diablo 1 all became corrupted, and we referenced the sorcerer later, I think, in Act 2. Forget exactly where. You guys know more than me. I don't know. There's some guy. Um, and then we, we do not explain what happens to all of the heroes from Diablo 2, and some of them, some of them are referenced and some of them aren't. Um, so that's where we're at with the, the um, characters themselves. So, I mean, even during Diablo 2, it was established that the warrior from Diablo 1 was the Dark Wanderer. So we're just kind of yeah, adding on top just, of that. We've clarified his background and specifically tied him to Leoric and, and the events of Tristram. Hey, guys. I always liked the fact that in Diablo 2, some of the equipable items had kind of a direct connection to the lore, such as Azerath and so forth. And I was wondering if any of the loot in Diablo 3 might have a kind of a direct connection to the lore that might make it in the player's eyes something I really need to have. And then also really quickly too, one of my favorite NPCs was Ormus in Diablo 2 and I was wondering if he might have a less ratty life making an appearance in Diablo 3. Uh, on the item question, um, absolutely there is major lore tie-ins all over the place. Like most of the legendary items have a little piece of lore in, when, on their actual like mouse over tooltip as well, adding quite a bit of depth to the world. There's many references to existing Diablo lore, there's many hints at new Diablo lore, and of course we have, separate from the item system, all these lore books in the game, um, quite a number of them, many of them narrated by either Deckard Cain, sort of the historian of our world, uh, and Abdul Al Hazir, who's this great traveler character who, who narrates much of the other ones. As for Ormus. All right, here's a, here's a big reveal. Um, Ormus sadly didn't make it to the final game. Um, he actually was in the game for a while. So um, that means we have a model for him. So uh, I put my money on him showing up again somewhere. Awesome. Thank you. We have time for a few more questions. Okay, uh, you just mentioned about the Diablo 1 heroes were going to be Blood Raven in Diablo 2. So I'm wondering, is the summoner also the hero from Diablo 1? Uh, well, I'm just the, the summoner, um, meaning the guy from, uh, help us out here. What's the area that he's in? Uh, okay, thank Arcane you. Sanctuary, right. Thank you. Wasn't that, uh, was that uh, Horizon? Yeah. <laughs> Man, we're doing yeah, great. Yeah, the, the question, the summoner was supposed to be um, the, the hero, yeah, from, from Diablo 1. I was just, what I was asking when you asked the question without the mic was, did we, did we confirm that or did we hint at it? I think we confirmed it. So, yeah. I think that was that was the intent. I, I don't. Hopefully, it came across. Good thing I'm manning a lore panel. Yeah, let's thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, he kind of hinted at my question, which was whether there was a relationship between Horizon and um, I forgot his name, the new guy, the new Herodric sage that you are introducing. Oh, cool. Yes. And so I'll also include a little thing. Is there a lore reason that Asmodon has, is sewn up the way those one demons that explode are? Um, no, it was just, uh, just one of those uh, artistic concepts that we thought looked really cool and really kind of just added to his look. Um, there's not really a lore reason behind it. Um, Horizon is, is a totally different, uh, he has nothing to do with the Herodrum. He was, uh, I don't know if you guys, 
I don't, won't get too deep into it, but him and his brother were mages, and they ended up this, this big, huge mage battle that almost decimated the known world at one point in time. So he, he had a totally different history from the Haradrim, and Zoltan Kul was, was a dark Haradrim, so they're completely different. But, but they are certainly similar kinds of characters, you know, just very powerful wizards that went nuts and, you know, have subterranean, you know, bachelor pads, you know. Thank you. Hi. On the theme of uh, revisiting story elements from the previous games, finding out what happened to them, uh, what about the locations like Karast and Lutgalain? Will we see them again? Uh, no, we. It's, it's almost completely new areas in this game. Most of the uh, Diablo, uh, previous Diablo game references is we deliberately set the start of the game in, in New Tristram, which is across this little river from Old Tristram, um, because we wanted to, it's, you know, it's been, what, 10 or 11 years now since Diablo 2 came out. We wanted to sort of set that tone and get people back into it, and for people who had never played before, they sort of get to experience some of that history with the Skeleton King being your first boss, etc., you know, to, to get that back in. But while we do go back to, you know, Kedjistan and some of the other um, areas, we wanted to show new things. Of course, Ariat being another exception to that later, that's where the demon army's coming from, but the area's changed so much that it might as well be a new area. Certainly we talked about, you know, bringing a lot of those areas back, but we, we decided on brand new things instead. We love to sort of expand the world and show you new things whenever we can. Thank you. We have time for one last question. Hi. Um, I, my question is concerning the vessel of Diablo, because uh, as far as I have read, um, neither Duriel and Dariel had a vessel, and no other uh, lesser demons had a vessel, and uh, Diablo even made a, an appearance in the Sin Wars without a vessel. So uh, why does he want a vessel? What is he needed for? Uh, define vessel. Uh, a human so, soul stones. Uh, you no, know, uh, the human that he takes possession of, right. the uh, king's sons. First the younger one and then the old one. Right, so during, so initially the, the evils, the three prime ones were exiled, you know, they were overthrown by the lesser evils and they were thrown to earth. They lost a, a not earth, sorry, sanctuary. They lost a ton of their power when they did that. Uh, and that allowed the Haradrim, not that the Haradrim were weak themselves, but that allowed the Haradrim to, to be able to find a way to capture them and hold them. So Diablo at the time of Diablo 1 is still very weak. He's got this essence and he's got these insidious plans and it's kind of slow moving. You know, he's got to take over a kid because he wasn't, he tried to do the orc and he couldn't quite do it, you know, and, and by the end he sort of tricked the warrior into taking the soul stones to get a more powerful vessel. Essentially he's just still building his power and, he, you know, he's not uh, strong enough to just show up as Diablo yet, though he does get that strong over the course of the games. I think you can argue just technically that uh, while the world stone was up and doing its thing, which suppresses, you know, uh, you know, angels and demons really uh, to some degree that uh, most of these evils or whatever would, would have to be anchored in, in some kind of mortal form to possess them or whatever, really just to be anchored in this reality. Although with the world stone uh, blown to bits, um, all bets are off, you know what I mean? So these guys, very mega level, can probably just walk right in, you know. Thank you. Let's please give our panelists a big round of applause for their time. Thanks for coming, guys. Coming up next on the pa development panel stage is the World of Warcraft art panel, and uh, on the main stage is the Diablo 3 open question and answer.